Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is your host Majestic speaking and today we're going to be looking back into some more MechWarrior Online and today I'm going to be taking out a heavy that I'm not very familiar with. I know I've been doing like a series on lights and um, you know even assaults and stuff like that with the Origins pack and everything but I was looking back through my inventory and I saw that I really don't use cataphracts at all. Um, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to see if you know I can make something out of it, you know? Um, kind of going against the grain here, it's an inner sphere heavy, and I only have two variants of the Cataphract. I have this one, which is the 3D Champion, and the Ilya Mermets, the, uh, the hero variant of it. So, you know, it's kind of like a, a new uncharted territory for me, but at the same time, you know, I figured I would just give something new, especially with the, the event going on this weekend, which is uh, the... You know, the Mark III event where, you know, you can take out a champion mech and you get 50% extra experience, um, or XP. And, uh, you get, you know, if you, if you get the most kills and you get a point and then that applies to, you know, redeeming rewards afterwards. If you get one point versus 40 points or something like that, eventually you can get a cicada which is the champion f version or the cha champion variant of the cicada so ultimately that's the goal but as you can see just for the event that the chassis bonus is now a 50% XP bonus which it's normally 30% on the champions so I thought that that was pretty cool pretty neat little event that they have going on here um, I'm not going to be around much this weekend but I did want to get uh, maybe one more of these videos out for you guys because the champions you know they have some pretty cool quirks that go along with them and this Cataphract 3D is no different. Um, I looked at it and it does cater to my kind of playstyle. Might be a little slower than I really want it to be, but that's kind of how my builds typically run. Is I give up if I'm going to go a little heavier and deal with a heavier mech, then I, you know, I take the the bullet, in other words, for the speed, and I really jam in the the firepower. So on this thing, it has ballistic cooldown of 5%. UAC jam chance minus 30%, so, you know, 30% better chance that my UX won't jam. Um, the laser duration on it is also, uh, you know, I get a 20% bonus on that too, so I kind of played around with it, and this was the loadout that I came up with, so I utilized both ballistic card points that it has to offer with UX. So I have two UAC 5s, one on the right arm, one on the right torso, and then I filled the four laser hard points with medium lasers. So, you know, mid to short range combat and the UAC 5s to um, cater specifically to the quirks that are involved with this mech. And um, I wanted to keep a standard engine on it because it is an inner sphere, so I didn't want to risk my, my torso getting blown off or anything. And not to mention that, but I also can't fit an XL engine because of the number of slots that I have taken up. Um, you know, I decided to put an endo steel structure. I can't even put Fel Fiber's armor on it because I don't have enough slots. So I decided to stick with the standard engine. You know, s suck it up with the a num with the amount of tonnage that is that's applied on the mech. So I I'm sacrificing a little bit, but at least I know if my torso doesn't gets blown off, that I'll still be in the match. Um, and I have the loadout that I want to use. I have exactly what I want to use, and. With all that being said, I have a 1.43 heat management ratio, and I can go 64.8 kph. So it might be a little slower, but fully armored, as you can see, except in the back, as I tr as I normally do. I took one hard uh, uh, one hard point of armor off of each leg, uh, so that I can uh, so that it wouldn't be overweight. In other words, I have four tons of UAC ammo and four double heat sinks, or eight heat sinks in total. Modules, none. I didn't put any on there yet. Why? Because I didn't think about it. So I'm thinking about it right now, and I'm going to put, um, let's see what I want. I, I know I'm going to put a cool shot just in case, you know, because if I get into a heated battle and I keep, um, you know, using my laser alpha and then tapping on the UX afterwards, they're not really going to jam much. So I know that the heat's definitely going to, you know, probably get up there at some point. Probably not peak. I, I don't think I'll ever let it peak, but just in case and then I will put an improved I guess I'll go improved airstrike why not um, I don't need to use the utilize the other cool shot I'm not scouting so I don't need a UAV now that, that should but just about do it so I'm kind of excited to use this thing it can use jump jets I, I know that I can utilize that but I decided 
not to do that, and I do have the ammo in the legs, so um, I don't need to really use the case um, in this point at that point because I, I mean, if they shoot off my leg, it's going to blow up my leg anyway. So you know, if if I lose my ammo, at least I know that they're shooting at my legs. We're on a heavy mech. The chances of them actually shooting at your legs is not very high, so I'm going to take that risk. Oh, gotta save it. And I've, you know, I haven't really taken this mech out much at all. I think I had uh, like 2,000 total experience on it, and then I just completed the basic tier of skills based off of um, the amount of GXP I have. I had a lot laying around, so it's really just a basic mech, but I just haven't used it that much. So let's drop into the queue here, see if we can get three good matches out of it. Um, again, I do have the 50% XP bonus for the event this weekend. Wanted to do a champion build, one that I haven't done yet on the channel. Um, I wanted to do the... Well, first I wanted to do the champion build because of the event. Second, I wanted to do a build on a mech that I have never really taken out. And I could have... I was thinking about taking out the, the Hunchback 4P, the champion version of that again. Um, but I did have a video that I posted on that back in July. And I was like, you know what, I'll just do something kind of new. Um, I could have taken out a Storm Crow as well, the, St the champion Storm Crow, the champion Cheetah, I believe I have. Um, and the champion Timberwolf, but I decided not to take those guys out and just start fresh and, and use something that I don't really use. So I'm really going to try and stick to maps that I'm good at with this thing, especially if I'm not that good with it, I'm not going to push my luck and, uh, and, and, you know, go, go way out of my, out of my way here by, you know, doing like Terra Therma or something like that. Um, Terra Therma Conquest, right? You know, that would probably be my, my demise, but looks like we are going to start on HPG and we are going to start with a skirmish here. So I can kind of see how the firepower on this thing works. Again, I catered to the quirks on this thing. So the UAC jam chance reduced by 30%. That's huge because I know that, like, I, I'm, you know, pretty annoying out to uh, almost to a point where I'm annoying at how fast I'm clicking the buttons for the UX. So, you know, just keep that in mind as you're as you're watching the gameplay unfold here. That, you know, I, I, you might hear some rapid fire clicking in the background, and that, and that jam chance. You know, I didn't even realize that that was a quirk until I started really looking into this thing. So, we'll see how we do, but. And my, there's my buddy Psychoholic right down here. So it looks like this first round is going to be a goodie. Um, I'm pretty happy <laughs> that he's on our side. Uh, I wouldn't want to be against him. Uh, he's definitely one of the top players in the game right now. So it's pretty cool that he's in the pug queue. And I got happen to happen to sync drop with him is how we like to call it. Give him a little shout out. Say hello. And again, this map is definitely one of my all-time favorites, just because of it's kind of it's obviously a little colder. I mean, we're on a you know a foreign planet kind of style map, and I I like the balance of how open it is and how um, there are structures that you can hide out with uh, or hide under. You know, you have the manifold up here and. Uh, you you can go underneath if you really want to, so you know there's a there's a wide variety of stuff that you could do if you want you know when you're playing around on it and there's a ton of options and that's what I like about like when you're with team play is like you can really really coordinate some serious serious attacks um, and tactic wise, so just keep that in mind because there's plenty of options and there's no. Um, there's no set way of going around this map. Like, you know how, like, in some maps you might want a NASCAR a lot, or you might want to, um, you know, everyone groups up at one point. They know that that's where the, the, the focal point of the battle is going to be and stuff. There's nothing like that on this map, because, I mean, look, we're going the, uh, the route of, you know, Echo 5, Echo 6, as opposed to, you know, underneath or on top of the manifolds. Um, we could also do Echo 4, Delta 4 area. So there's, there's a bunch of options and you know every map unfolds different especially with a pug drop so um, you know it's always different sorry for the I'm not sure if you guys are catching that lag there but um, if you are target destroyed okay they are firing at me I knew I was gonna get hit but not really worried about it Oh, 
really sure where they are, to be completely honest. I'm guessing they're on top of the manifold if I had to get... Yeah, I, th I think I'm seeing laser fire from across the manifold. So, I guess I'll head there. Yeah, there, a lot of them are underneath. So, you know, they're probably going to get a couple scouts that are that are up top. You know, looking around, seeing where everyone's going. But a majority of them are going to stick to the basement and... Acquired. Got a dragon and something else. New target acquired. Nice, I like that. Cooldown on the ballistics is also a factor, so I definitely took that into account. Here comes here comes another victim. Eat my cataphract bullets. He's not really liking that. Go down now. I feel like there's someone hanging up around here. They're probably all, like I said, a majority of them are probably underneath. Uh, there's Psyche over there on his in his Warhawk. I know I'm going to damage my legs a little, but that's okay. We're up to nothing. Looks like we kind of outpositioned them from the standpoint of, you know, we can fo fire in on them, and we have four entry points, and they're kind of crowded. Nice. Get a couple shots off. I like these UX though. Definitely deal some punishment. So. New target acquired. So I got an Ebjag on the other side. Got a couple guys going for him, but we're not really making any kind of aggressive move or anything. Right now, again, we have the advantage. So if they're going to camp underneath, you know, we have no reason to, to push it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Kind of curious as to which exit entry they come out of. Because, I mean, if they come out of this side, I can't see it ending well for them. Their psyche. Airstrike online. Kind of, kind of want to push under. I know that this might be like a standoff, but you don't want to be stupid about it. You don't want to just go in guns blazing when you know that there's nine of them underneath there. It's suicide. So, you know, if half of our team wants to chill over there and, and, and take out a, you know, one mech that's scouting around or something like that, go for it. <laughs> it is what it is, so. And the, like, everyone's saying good game because everyone knows that they're just they're just chilling under there. They're not going. They're not doing anything. There's that Ebjag. He's back. He's red. He's like solid red too. So. You know, the fact that we have the advantage, that's what's that's what counts right now, because otherwise it's some if we were the ones that were down, we would be the ones that would have to make the uh be the aggressors, but you know, it is what it is. If they're just gonna chill under there, that's fine with me. I think they're coming out of Delta five, if I had to guess. So, uh, I guess, uh, you know, this is a really boring round, but. That Psyche behind me? On top of me? Or wherever, wherever he is? Where's he over there? Yeah, I don't, I couldn't tell you what he's doing. Mm. 
And they're starting to trade underneath the manifold, which... I don't know. I don't see any movement going on now underneath. So this is, you know, this is a, this is a standoff, and sometimes this is probably a good demonstration of how sometimes in Mech Warrior, it's better to be patient than to be the foolish aggressor and and be that jerk that pushes in and gets picked off just to give your team a disadvantage. So. New target acquired. It's over there. It's probably a light. I'm gonna get a better angle in case one of them walks across. New target acquired. Airstrike online. New target. Uh, Ebjack, he's going down. Target destroyed. So I guess I'm the only one over here now. I'm not target really sure. Acquired. This might be a little bit of an aggressive move on my part, but. Yeah, you're not going to stay there for very long, sir. New target acquired. I have a king crab coming over. Target acquired. It doesn't look like they really want to make any kind of move, which is fine. I mean, we, we picked another one of them off, so... Those three zip. There's only five minutes left in the match, so there's only really so much they we can do. What they can do. But I'm not seeing my teammates' damage going down at all, so it doesn't look like they're in that entrance. New target. That king oh, wow. crab is going to uh, be fighting. Gonna drop down a little bit. There you go. I'll, uh, I'll trade some shots with him. Cored me up a little bit, but I definitely got some good shots off. Oof. Never mind. Wow, okay. So they're trying to go after me, looks like. Or the U UAV above my head. New target acquired. Yep, they're probably going to make a move, and when they do make a move, it's probably going to be this entrance that they come out of because that's where their direwolf and their king crab are are, uh, are positioned and you know there's only four minutes left in this match so there's only there's very little uh choice for them i guess again don't want to fall I'm going to wait over here, because I think they're going to come out this en entrance. And with there only being three and a half minutes left... I don't, I don't see it going any other way. Yep, here they come. 
I was right. Ooh, boy. Getting lit up now. I told you, I knew they were going to come out this side, because that's where their assaults were, so... Ow. Ow, 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 ow. Yeah, I might get I might get, get killed here actually, which is kind of funny. Seven to two, oh boy. Target destroyed. Eight to two. Airstrike online. Yeah, come on out. Target acquired. No need for me to be aggressive. I'm cored up, so I mean, it would kind of be stupid for me to be the the you know the first one in. But if everyone's pushing in, that's you know that's fine by me. I don't have a problem with that. You might get me here. Ow. There we go. He missed my center torso. He hit both my. He missed my left and he hit my left and right torso, but he didn't hit anything else. That was clutch. Oh, jeez. Somehow I survived. Twelve to two is the final score. Only two forty-five damage, so not very good damage-wise. But you know, I have a feeling that if this thing is engaged in skirmishy, close-range kind of combat. That that number is going to skyrocket, um, you know, because right now as it sits, it's not that, um, you know, I, that that map was that was definitely a one-off scenario kind of thing where, you know, there, if we're just we had a typical standoff, you know, and that's that's how some of these matches go, you know, one one team's going to be the aggressor, they finally decide to push, and then if you're there waiting for them, that's it. That's that's the name of the game. So we were more patient. We we traded. We got better trades than they did, and ultimately, you know, we capitalized on it. We won. So Canyon Network, kind of an interesting choice to see how this mech turns out. I mean, I don't think it's going to overheat, but it's definitely uh, unless we're in the trenches. I uh, I don't think being above, uh, you know, in in the center and everything is going to be in my favor, but. I may be completely wrong, so I'm kind of curious to see how this thing does in in this uh, in these kind of scenarios. I really do like the fact that the UX don't really jam that easy. Um, that just you know it was continuous rate of fire, really. So um, you know the fact that I, I just kept firing and firing and firing and nothing, and you know they couldn't really uh, they they never really jammed. I mean they jammed once, and I wasn't even in a critical kind of situation. So um, with that being said. I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that, you know, we get a little more skirmishy, brawly kind of situation this round. Um, you know, if everyone groups up in the center, like in the, by the little island in the middle, I think that this thing will, will really showcase it's, what it's used for. Um, you know, especially that, that crab, he had, he had good, very good shots. He had very good accuracy. He was hitting me right in the center torso and my head with his UX. And that, again, that's an assault and I'm only a heavy. So, you know, when you, when you compare the two, you know, although they are in a different weight class, you know, he definitely pinpointed his shots pretty well. So, you know, I was, I was yellow, um, even just after my encounters with him. So credit to him for that. But I kept myself in the game, landed my shots, and, you know, played accordingly. I would have liked to have been more aggressive, but, you know, in that case, it literally was just that, is we were being more patient than they were, and as a result, it worked out in our favor. We Our trades won, and um, it forced them to be more aggressive, and when they did get more aggressive, we were there, so. So let's see how we do here. Next round. What is hitting me? Just keep in mind this is only a basic mech. Um, I don't have, you know, it mastered or anything. It's, it literally is just as, like, as 
bare as it gets, apart from, you know, I, I, I do have it, the basic tier filled out, so that's good, but, you know. There we go. And Zeus doesn't like it. This is more like it. This is more of the skirmishy kind of brawly feel I was getting from this mech. Get down, Stalker. Yeah, you don't like the. You can't stand the heat. Get out the kitchen, boy. Get the. Get out the kitchen, boy. Yeah. Yeah. You like that? <laughs> I'm down to 62 bullets left in my ACs. Oh, jeez. Didn't expect that to go like that, but. Got a little tag on him. And they're all on the other side of this thing. Wow, okay. So, gonna have to uh, be a little careful here. They're swinging around that side. We're swinging around this side. It looks like we're just gonna be, uh, you know, and again, I always complain about it. Don't stand behind someone who's who's clearly out engaging. Because if he needs to back up real quick, you don't want to be the reason why he dies. So... Nice. Some good shots getting put in. Ooh, now we're down. Nice. Three to three. Very brawly scenario we're in here. This Atlas is going to come around the corner. I know it. I only have 40 shots left. That Jester's going around. Everyone's going into the trenches. Nice. Five to four. Woo! Those are some nice shots right there. What's this adder doing? Woo! Right in the center torso. Oh, man. I might love this thing. This might be a new favorite. Nice. 11 to 5. Oof. Nice. I'm very curious to see how the damage went on that one. I used all my UAC ammo. <laughs> so that definitely, uh, that was definitely a better round than the last one. Let's see how we did. 732. Oh my goodness. <laughs> With a mech that's a basic tier. That's nuts. Yeah, I had a feeling I had the most damage. One kill, 10 assists. I landed shots on 10 mechs. That's insane. Wow. Ah, uh, 732. That, that's, uh... I don't think I've ever done that much damage in a catapher. I think the most amount of damage I ever got... Real talk here for a second. Was... Like 1600, I think? It was either 14 or 16, something like that. So in that range, and it was with my Blackjack 1X. So yeah, keep keep <laughs> keep that in mind in case you don't think that uh, the mediums can deal out the damage. But we're going into the third round here, third and final round at that. Hopefully we get another good map. Hopefully we get we get some more good gameplay. And again, you know that turned into to a very 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 brawly skirmishy situation. Um, you know, we, we focused in the middle. That was their plan as well. So it was very close range combat kind of scenarios. Um, as soon as they ducked into the trench, I knew that we had them. We had the, posi the better position. That's the worst thing that you can do in that situation is if you're on the enemy team and um, you see that we're taking the middle and you're taking the middle as well, dropping down into that canyon on either side you know, you're 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 asking for it. We have the height advantage. We're shooting down on you. You have to shoot up at us. So, <coughs> excuse me. So just keep that in mind if you're ever on that map. You know, if you decide to commit to the middle, stay in the middle. Even if the rest of your team is running away, you know, your positioning might help them survive if, in case they are being um, dumb and jumping into, uh, you know, one of the... Uh, one of the foxholes, or you know, one of the trenches, in other words. So, 
River City, interesting, uh, interesting third map we have here. Not really, it's it's a bigger map and it's a little more open. So this is kind of, it's not along the same lines as uh, what's it called? Um, HPG Manifold, but at the same time, it is kind of in the same. Uh, category as what, what, what would I compare this to I could say you know this in Crimson Strait I feel like they're like neighboring cities like like River City is is right next to the ocean and then Crimson Strait is like the second piece of this map like it'll just wrap around more <laughs> and then and then you're you're on Crimson Strait <laughs> so um you know, it's an open map, but if I can get, you know, skirmishy, brawly in the city kind of areas of the map, that's where this thing is going to shine. And I, I showed that last round just because I said if we get in the middle and we're doing a NASCAR kind of situation, this thing is going to shine. And look what happened. Maybe I should go this way. Yeah, I'm definitely going to go this way. I'm not, I'm not in a light, so I'm not going to scout over there by the bridge. And I can use night vision. I think I'd rather go thermal. Um, but I'll wait until I'm with the rest of the group. Got a, got two arctic cheetahs running around with us. So that's definitely in our advantage. <laughs> and it looks like we're going to group up at the citadel. Again, this is assault, so we do have to keep an eye on our base. Um, hopefully they wait up for me there, and that we don't get flanked by some lights. But you saw the difference between the first and second rounds immediately. Um, you know, the fact that one of them was like... Close quarters, but we were patient and we were just trading, trying to get better shots in. And then the second one was just magnificent from the standpoint of exactly how this build should be. The medium lasers, constant fire with the UX. It's it's kind of hard to beat. <laughs> so um, now I can see why people like the cataphract chassis that that much. So you know, props to you guys for for knowing how to use this thing. I guess now I finally realize why you use this thing. And it's for exactly that reason, so. I'll go night vision here. <clears throat> we can get this Jenner out of the way already. And they are pinging me. Big time, actually. Weapon jammed. Yeah, I'm gonna back up here. What is behind me? Jesus. New target acquired. Ooh! Did I get a shot off on him? Oh, he's 700 meters out. And he's going down like a sweet muffin pretty soon. Yeah, there he goes. One to one. Quick draw up here. Come on. Poke out. Poke out some more. Oh boy. Did not know they were all right there. Had no idea they were all right there. Oh no. Seat my CTs. Ah. Oh. Blammo. Wow, they uh that was a good push. I have to say, that was a good push. Very centered, focused fire. New target acquired. Target destroyed. Nice. New target acquired. Four to five? Oof. Okay. XL engine. <laughs> That's all I could say about that. New target. The 
this guy's going down. There he goes. Oof. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I had a feeling that was coming. Oof. There's nine. It's like a slow death. Everyone I go to is the next one to die. Yeah, this guy's going down. And there's ten. <laughs> let's, see, let's see if you can be the next one. New target acquired. Yep. <laughs> Let's see the last guy and his cheetah. And there we go. So they definitely had the uh, the advantage on that push. That was an excellent push, and they came. I didn't even, you know, I'll be I'll be honest when when it happens. They. Uh, they pushed right into this, uh, you know, harbor pretty quick, so not a good round at all. But in any case, that is the uh, Cataphract 3D champion. Yeah, we didn't really, I mean, we had a couple guys who were putting out some work, but in any case, that's the Cataphract 3D champion. So catered specifically to the quirks that it's built around, um, you know, with between the UX and, oh, I guess I did the most damage on someone. <laughs> I don't. I guess I don't really know. Um, and I, that's part of the perks of the uh, this weekend's event. So, um, in any case, that's the Cataphract 3D Champion. Um, you know, catered specifically to the quirks that it has, and um, built my my loadout entirely around that premise. So, you know, it happened to work out for for round two because it was a more skirmishy type of situation. But as you can see, you know, HPG manifold. River City, not ideal for this thing. Um, we did wind up on them, and I tried to make the best of the situation, you know, stick with the team and so forth. Um, but it, we came up a bit short. So it is what it is. You're going to get some good games. You're going to get some bad games. And I want to show you both, especially if it happens. So, you know, you can't win them all. And I'm just like you guys. Sometimes you just have some some uh, fantastic outings. And from, from there, you could go switch right to the other end and have horrible, you know, a horrible round. So... In any case, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Regardless, seeing both sides of this mech, both its uh, pros and cons, its its admirable traits and its flaws. And um, if you guys do want to be a part of the thousand subscriber subscription, uh, you know, giveaway, um, you know, I'll, again, all you have to do is shoot me an email, tell me that you want to be involved, and uh, I'll make sure that your name is added to the list, so that when I do reach that. Uh, that I'll just jumble up the names and you will be included in there. So, you know, if I spit them out and you're one of them, then I'll be uh, shooting over those gift codes to you. So, in any case, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much again for all the support and for watching. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care.